This is National 5 Maths Revision. Uh, this should help you for your uh, assessments that may be coming up in January and February time. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the Arts and Sectors section that we've got here. Okay. Right then, let's see. So we've got three questions. Um, we've got an area question, so an area of a sector. We've got a perimeter, which is really a length of arc question. And down below, we have to work out an angle at the centre. So we've got three different questions that we're going to be working on here. Um, for all of these, the, the type of kind of formula that I like to use is using the uh, fraction equation that's going to work out for us. So for this one here, what we'd be doing is I'm looking at what I'm trying to work out. So I'm trying to work out the area of the sector of that shaded sector. So what I would start with is the area of the sector. So AOS, if I can just write that, area of the sector. And that's uh, that, that kind of works together with the area of a circle. So the area of the circle. So that would be a fraction that works. And that fraction would be equivalent to the angle at the center. So the angle all divided by 360 because that, that fraction there and that fraction there will be equivalent. And then I've got another fraction that I'm going to write and that's going to be the uh, length of the arc. So if I thought about an arc that was given there, the length of arc all over the uh, circumference and the circumference of a whole circle. Okay, so generally I use these three, three fractions to work out anything that I'm going to do. And I usually have a wee bit of thought behind it when I'm writing them out. So because I knew I was working out area of the sector, I'm writing the area one first. And I can see I'm given an angle, so I've really just written the angle one next because that's what I'm going to use. I'm only ever going to use two of these fractions together. So I can see that I've got the, uh, the length of arc here, okay, and the circumference. But uh, I could work out the circumference because the circumference is just pi d, okay? And I could work that out, but I don't know the length of arc, so I'm probably not going to use that one. I have to use this, okay, because I want to work out the area of the sector. I can work out the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, okay? So that's what that would be. Um, I've got the angle, or I can work out the angle, and I know what 360 is, so I've got these ticked. And I've got that one circled. That's the one I'm going to try and work on. So I'm not going to use this uh, this part of the uh, the equation that I'm going to use. Right, here we go. Let's use these two fractions that are here. I'm going to substitute my values in. So the area of the sector all over pi times the radius squared, so that's 18 squared, is going to be equal to the angle. So remember that angle, it's not the 50 that I'm interested in, it's the angle that's uh, around the uh, the sector that I'm interested in. So that's like uh, 360 take away 50. Okay, so that's what that angle would be in there. A full term take away the 50 that's, uh, that's in there. And I'm going to divide that by 360. Right, so, so let's uh, kind of work this out a wee bit better. So I'm going to leave the area of the sector on the left-hand side. And what I'm really doing is I'm multiplying by pi, multiplying by 18 squared. And that gets rid of all of that from that side. If I multiply on that side, I need to do the same to the other to balance up the equation. So that there works out to be 310 if I just take the 50 away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by pi and multiply by 18 squared. That's all divided by 360. And uh, all I need to do is just fire that straight into my calculator and that should work out the answer for me. Right, let's have a look at that. Right, so what I'm going to use here is I'm going to try and use the uh, the fraction button. So the fraction button that's here on the calculator. So let's go for that. So set that up and I'm going to go for 310 times pi times 18 squared. Okay, I'm going to use the cursor, just go down to the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 360 in. I'm going to just press equals and I'll probably have to press the SD button to try to get rid of the 279 pi. So there we go. So that gives me an answer there. I'm just going to write that one down. So that's uh, 876.504 uh, 3504. And I'm just going to round this one here. I'm going to round it to one better than that. So it's one place better than that is one decimal place. So I'm going to go for 8. 76.5 we're working in centimeters and they're square centimeters because it's area that i'm after and that's two um we've got one decimal place that we used it's not specified here but but often you'll get one specified to some significant figures possibly when you do this type of question so there's my final answer right let's look at the next one the next question over here 
So what we're trying to do with this one, we're trying to calculate the perimeter. So a perimeter question like this, um, the, the complexity on this one is trying to work out what uh, the length of this arc is that comes all the way around from A and round to B. Um, looking at it, I know the radius, I know the angle at the centre, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the, uh, the formula that I'm going to try and use, just using the uh, equivalent fractions. Right, let's go for it. So what we're trying to work out first of all is that length of arc. Okay, so that's the thing that I'm trying to work out first, the length of arc. So I'm going to start with that, LOA all over the circumference. Is equal to, I'm going to put the angle next because I'm sure I'm going to use that. So it's going to be the angle at the centre, all divided by the 360, a full term. And then the final part is going to be the area of a sector all over the area of a circle. I'm not going to use that though. That one is, I've not got any information about the area of the sector. So I'm really not going to use that part and I'm going to use these two fractions. So let's go and substitute things in. Okay, so what I've got is about the length of arc all over the circumference of a circle, which is pi times the diameter, remember? So pi times the diameter, so double that should give me 51, okay? And what I've got over here, the angle at the center is 145, all over, and it's 360. And I know some people get, get taught that we work out the uh, the fraction and then we take the fraction of the full circle. I, th I find that uh, certainly using the um, the equivalent fractions, it's good for working backwards with some calculations. It certainly is. So I like it that way. Right, so let's go and do this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by pi times 51. So that would eliminate this side. Okay, so if I just write it in. So I'm going to times that by pi times 51. Okay. So what that does is it eliminates that and that, but I have to multiply this side by pi and 51 as well. So what I've got left is length of arc is going to be equal to 145. On the top line, I've got that there. On the bottom line, I've got 360. And I'll use the fraction button again just to calculate that out. So here we go. So fraction button. I'm going for 145 times pi times by 51. On the bottom, I've got the full term, which is 360. Press that, and what I'll do is I'll press the SD button to find the answer. So that's going to be 64.5335409. And I'm going to just round it to one place better than I'm giving, given. So that's going to be two decimal places. So that's going to be 64.54 that's going to be 53 that's going to be there. Okay, sorry. Okay, and that's going to be in centimetres. And that's the distance round about that, uh, that arc that's there. I was asked for the perimeter. Okay, so I need to work out the perimeter next. So perimeter is going to be equal to the value that I've got from here, 64.53 plus uh, 25.5 plus the other 25.5. And I know that that was... That was going to be uh, 51 when I added them together. So all I'll do is I'll just add 51 onto this that I've got left in my calculator, plus 51. That leaves me with 115.5335491. And uh, finally, I'm just going to round it to the, the two decimal places that's there, which I had already rounded earlier. So 115.5, and that's going to be, that's another three that's in there. Okay, so that's going to be 5.3. Okay, and that's going to be in uh, centimetres. So I just look at the units, make sure I've got them right, centimetres. Okay, and that's my final answer. Okay, last bit that we're going to do. So one more question to go for. Right then, so what we've got here is a pendulum. Remember, a pendulum is just something that will swing back and forward. Okay. Okay, like a grandfather clock, something like that. Okay, or some of the things that you see at the shows, maybe. You know, you might get that. So a pendulum is 45 centimetres long. So there's a wee schematic of it. Um, when the pendulum swings, it travels along an arc. So this arc that's here, and it covers a distance of 27.5 centimetres. Okay, calculate the size of the angle through which the pendulum travels. So that's going to be this wee angle in here. So this is what I'm trying to find out here. Okay, that angle. Right then, so let's set up the uh, the fractions. So because I'm going to be trying to work out the angle, I'm going to start with that. So the angle, all over 360, 
is going to be equal to, and I'm just having a quick look, so I know the length of arc, so I'm going to start with length of arc all over the circumference. And then the other fraction or equivalent fraction is the area of the sector, which I don't know anything about, and that would be the area of the circle, which I could calculate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two, these two uh, fractions to work out my answer. So my angle over 360 is going to be equal to the length of arc, which is given as 27.5, okay, 27.5, all divided by, and remember the circumference is pi times the diam diameter. So the radius there, so that would be the radius from the centre of a circle, okay, if I imagine that, a full circle that's there. Um, 45 times 2 would give me my diameter, which will be 90. Okay, so what we'll then do is I'll multiply both sides by the, um, I'll multiply them by 360. So if I multiply that by 60 and that by 360, balances the equation up, and what it does is it eliminates that 360 from there. So that leaves me with an angle that I'm after is 27.5 times uh, 360, all divided by pi over 90. And times 90, chuck it in the calculator and see how it goes. Right, here we go again. So into the calculator, I'm going to set the fraction button up. I'm going to go for 27.5. I'm going to multiply that by 360. One to the bottom line, I'm going to go for pi times 90. Okay, so there it's set up for me there, just in my calculator. I'm going to press the equals button and I get an answer coming out straight from there. Okay, so that's going to be 35. 5.0140874 and I'm just going to round this to uh, one decimal place okay so just one better than what I've been given basically although this is an angle I'm working out so it'll be 35.0 that's the one decimal place it's in degrees and it's to one decimal place Okay, so that's the, the three questions on the, uh, the arcs and sectors. Quite good that we've had a variety of area. We've had perimeter, which is the length of arc working out, and a backwards calculation here trying to work out the angle. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you with your revision on arcs and sectors.